You know, I wanted to hit on this idea of of not being enough because mm-hmm. I I sense that so many women, um, even those watching this now, have this this gaping hole in their heart where it becomes performative, which is exactly mm-hmm. what you know. As we look at this passage of scripture, and we're kind of to your point, Lisa, checking the box because our goal is to become enough, Mm -hmm. to become worthy. And I think it's really rooted in insecurity. And I I want to speak for a moment about what that is because many people think insecurity is about ego, um, insecurity is about arrogance, but in fact, insecurity is not a question of what you have, it's not a question of your ego, it's a question of what is your identity secured to? If your identity is secured to the approval of people, then you're going to be insecure. Why? Because people's opinions are fickle. You know, maybe today you did an amazing job and everyone's applauding and maybe tomorrow you do the exact same quality, but people are like, ah, that wasn't good enough. And so you become insecure because you've literally secured your identity to an unstable foundation. And that's why I always keep going back to verse 30, which is the idea that charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears Mm. the Lord is to be praised. Why? Because when you fear the Lord, when you reverence the Lord, when you honor the Lord, you are securing your identity to who He says you are, not who everybody else thinks you are, but who God Mm. says you are. And so the, the reality is, are we enough? The answer is we're enough, but we're not just enough. We were deemed worth dying for. Mm -hmm. And to Mm -hmm. me, that is the eternal answer to the question, am I enough? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus, knowing everything that we would think, do, say, every shortfall, every shortcoming we would have, still got up on that cross. And he said, you know what? You are worth this. Mm -hmm. So good. I love what you mentioned about... um, you know, the fear of the Lord. And oftentimes when you are, you know, when the Lord leaves the 99 for the one, you won't understand it until you become the one. Right. And wow. so um, like, like Brittany, she mentioned um, just this feeling of being the outsider, um, feeling that, she, am I doing enough? And what Nona, what you said about security, I think, you know, when you have, when you are the one, where do you begin? And because if charm is deceptive and beauty is fe- uh, fleeting, but the one who fears the Lord is worthy to be praised, well, what does fear mean? What does that mean in the context of the scriptures? And so the, the baseline, the bottom line, the, just the starting point is fear looks like a respect for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Fear looks like making him priority. Fear looks yeah. like um, um, honoring the Lord and having him as your focal point of worship. So whatever used to rule and reign, which is either your wants, your desires, your your agenda, your Pinterest account, as Lisa would refer to it, um, your highly you know um, edited photos on Instagram, that now takes a, a back seat way back over here, and all of a sudden Jesus takes the throne of your life. And now he becomes the focal point of fear, meaning now he has your respect, your worship, your honor, and and he becomes the focal point. And so when we think of of that, that gives me the fuel to be brave. That gives me the fuel Mm -hmm. to stand strong. That gives me the fuel to live in virtue. So what is virtue? It's just an old archaic word that means just a moral compass that he, his priorities become my priorities. His values become my values. And as now a child in the kingdom of God, who's, who has experienced the love of God, now I could see Proverbs 31 in a new light. It's not this antiquated poem. Now it becomes the fuel of life Mm -hmm. as if the Lord now views me through the grid of now you are the commendable woman because your starting point began at fearing me, honoring me, loving me, worshiping me. And it is my delight 
to serve him, to honor him, to respect him, to worship him. And that is the fuel for my life. And now when I raise kids, when I homeschool, when I'm leading the church, when I'm out there being a mom or being a best friend to someone and valuing other people, honoring those who are the unhoused community to those who are hungry and those who, who are orphaned and then turn around and, and communicate with civic leaders and, and being a diplomat, whatever I put my hand to, now I have the focal point of Jesus being the center of my life. And so I have... I have loved, Brittany, the story that that was the starting point, and now you're flourishing in your life of how God designed your life to be, is to be this wonderful, prophetic, godly Proverbs 31 woman. With better rhythm than any other Proverbs 31 and woman. she can dance, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today, and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.